What's up, guys? I'm India Paulino, and welcome to another episode of Raw. So today I have a very special guest. He is the author of Hard Times Create Strong Men and many other books. He's an award-winning real estate investor, and he has his own podcast called Respect the Grind. And this man is Stefan Arneo. What's up, dude? India, thank you for having me on your show. Like I said, you're much prettier than I am. It's good to be here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to have you. So gosh, there's like, you know, I, I love your videos. There's, I feel like there's so much that I want to ask and there's so much stuff that we can talk about, but unfortunately we don't have that much time. So I do want to focus on what I know. He I'll, says who we don't have much time says who I got to pick up my son. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. But I get it. That's a real, that's a that's real a, hard. That's stop. a real one. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to say this. That, so I first learned about you, um, I saw a video. It was about a marriage and Christian men and all. I'm like, all right, all right. So I listened to it. I'm like, I, I like his perspective. Then one day, Whitney was like, hey, listen to this video. It's, you're not going to like it. And I'm like, let's hear it. And it was the one where you were, I believe it was when you were on um, Impulsive. And it was about mm -hmm. a woman's purpose and a man's purpose. And the, you know, the bit that I heard was kind of like what I understood was, wait, so like, are, is this guy saying that women belong in the kitchen and that's their only purpose? I was like, who is this motherfucker? I'm like, oh, wait, I follow him. So I actually listen because I'm that type of person. I'm like, listen, it may not be my perspective, but I want to know more. Let me let me hear both sides. Right. So I started listening more and more and I'm like, OK, OK, I, I think I understand what he's saying. So. I want to ask you, for those who haven't watched that video, um, I think your point is very interesting and your perspective and all of that. What can you tell me? What is a man's purpose versus a woman's purpose? And when are women and men the most happiest? Yeah, so I, I think you're referring to I talk about my book, Hard Times Create Strong Men, a masculine purpose, a man's masculine purpose is his work and a woman's feminine purpose is her family. And right now we live in this world where we've almost reversed those two things. We're telling men, oh, it's OK to be a stay at home dad, which, by the way, women don't respect and men don't respect. Nobody respects a stay at home dad. Everyone spits on him and calls him a motherfucker. So that's that's like a trap. And then they tell a woman, oh, it's OK, baby, make it all about your career. But now what? You're a slave to your employer, a slave to the government. You forego your family. And then, you know, when a woman's like 40 or you know, even late 30s, doesn't have a family. Well, now she's unhappy because even a man like I'm 33 right now, I got money. I'm a top one percent man. What do I want? I want a wife, a kids and family. Well, if you're a woman and you're top one percent woman, let's say you're 33 or you're a lawyer or something. What do you want? A wife? Or what do you want a husband, a kids and family? Right. Well, the, the trouble for women when they go into their masculine purpose too much is women are hypergamous. They want to mate up. That's what hypergamy means. They want to mate someone up on the dominant scale, someone socially higher than them. But if they're at the top, they have trouble finding a man because the men at the top, they usually date down. They don't right, date right, up. Right. They want someone who's feminine to make them feel like a man to get their dick hard, make them enjoy sex and enjoy life. So it, it becomes tough for that top woman who's living in her masculine purpose um, what ends up happening is she's either alone, unhappy, eating soup for one, and she has a cat, or <laughs> hey, cats the other are cool, option. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, cats, cats actually mean cool. you have mental problems usually. <laughs> the, the other thing, the other thing she might do is she might pack up her career and just be a mom and be happy. And I'm not saying either one of those is right or wrong. Right, right. But you know, when you have a woman, you force her into her masculine purpose, and then she has trouble finding happiness. Well, here's why. Okay, so I actually have. So I grew up in a family who, you know, very traditional, old fashioned. I mean, your traditional gender roles where, you know, my dad worked his ass off night and day. And then you have my mom. She was a psychologist, but she gave all that up to raise us. So she was at <gasps> home. My dad worked. Oh, my gosh. And you mean so, so she did exactly what I said? <laughs> right. So so here's my thing. So that's what I grew up seeing as an example. And kids you know, yes, words are very important and powerful, but ultimately what you see is is what you're taking in, right? And that's your example. That's what I grew up seeing. However, my dad, who's, I mean, he's my everything, he's my best friend, my hero, he also, though, taught me, he's like, you're going to learn to work and because you're never, I don't want you to have to depend on a man. So right. 
now I, I I grew up seeing this, but of course my dad, I'm watching my dad bust his ass every single day and he's my inspiration. And then he tells me this. So what do I grow up to do? Exactly that. So then I started working and I just, that was my obsession. It was like, all I cared about was my career. It was about making more money and, you know, doing as much as I possibly could, right? Reaching the top. And that's what I did. I reached the top of everything when there was no room for growth. All right, move on to the next thing. I was very successful, was, was married. And when I was married, it was like, I didn't give a shit. Like, great man, but... I wasn't didn't there. Give a shit about what? I didn't give a shit about. I wasn't there in that marriage space. Like I, I found myself forcing myself to play the role of wife. And was he a strong enough man for you, though, <sighs> or was he weaker than you? So here's the, the thing. Problem. I felt no. I get it. Trust me. I, I when there isn't you. a strong enough man, the women, the women throw him around. They, they beat the crap out of so him. So he was problem. strong in his way, but I'm a very strong ass person, and my personality is strong. I'm very, you know. I felt that, like, I, I was in that space. That <laughs> just say it. Just say it. Was he not I, enough for you? I was. I was. I was very like raw. Like, I don't give a shit if this is a male-dominated industry. I'm gonna fucking like take over. Like this. Like that was. I, did I accomplish a lot? Yes. But again, let me go back to the family thing. So he would ask about kids. Not that he wanted them right then. But I was like, mm, maybe when I'm 30. Kept pushing it off. All I cared about was my career. So clearly that right. didn't work. Got a divorce. <gasps> um, I, <laughs> I oh, you mean you were living in your masculine purpose and <laughs> oh, didn't dude, work? Oh, dude, dude, I was like only living in my masculine purpose. And so for right. me, so then I, I, I really focused on personal development. I, I was in a really dark place, not with that, but just other shit and traumatic stuff that I've dealt with. And I've, I, I knew I needed to focus on myself and growth and all that. Did all that. Still successful. I'm doing, I mean, financially, spiritually, mentally, like I was in an amazing place. But I felt like there was something missing. Like I just, I don't know. I needed something deeper. And, you know, Whitney comes along <laughs> and, uh, you know, we reconnected. And I found myself feeling differently about family now I'm like all right I'm now take it you know fast forward now I'm 29 30 yeah I'm like Saturn return like is it that is it like what is it um but it's like I realized here's the thing and it was such a fucked up thing for me going from literally career driven like dude because that's that's the only way that I feel that I could describe myself to wanting a family and then that tra transition um I found someone who I felt was, I could let go a little bit, if that makes sense. So it's kind of like, you know, like you say, a man's purpose is to work and like provide and like that's, that's what, that's your goal, right? That's what you do. I felt that's a like purpose. That it's more than a goal. It never ends. A no, purpose right. Is a purpose. Purpose that's why when men life. retire and stop working, they die because they have no purpose now. Right, right. So that for me was, and, and it still is in a sense, but so I found a man and, and this is what I feel happened who I felt was living in his masculine purpose to the max to where I'm like, it allowed me to feel comfortable enough to back off a little bit and kind of mm. embrace. Cause let me tell you something. I think that not even just me, I think women nowadays, including me, you know, uh, not even that long ago, uh, feel as if feminine if, if feminine energy is a sign of weakness like if you embrace that it kind of makes you weak and this is i'm talking about the strong women the women who are like you know the ones that do make it to be ceos and all that of companies you have to be a certain type of way and so for me i found him i'm like okay i can back off a little bit and kind of learn to embrace this feminine my that whole side of things which was weird as hell and when I did become a mother, that definitely helped with that. And I and my feminine purpose, yeah, it that's 100 percent I would never give it up. But I also have to fulfill my masculine side. And I wanted to ask your opinion. I go, what do you think about that? Are you saying that? Because I think a lot of women are looking for clarification. Like, are you saying that we only have this one purpose of family? 
or can we have multiple purposes? Because I feel that we all have multiple purposes. And yes, there's masculine and feminine, but what are your thoughts on that? Well, man's purpose is his work. That's his masculine purpose. Right. So if you want a masculine man, which most women want, his masculine purpose is work. Well, there's also a feminine purpose to a man, yeah. which would be his family. But you probably don't want a feminine man because you're a feminine woman. You want to play feminine. So a man who's a stay-at-home dad probably isn't turning you on, right? Right. Doesn't, no, doesn't... true. I mean, but but true. I mean. Right, because you want to be feminine. Like, if he's going to be feminine, you got to be masculine. Then you, you got to be the work. dude in the relationship. Exactly. Right, and you and you don't like that, right? Because you're a woman. Well, guess what? Big surprise, right? And then, you know, for a woman, her feminine purpose is her family. And this is, this is the issue, I think, for women is we forced all the women into their masculine purposes. And they're, you know, going to university and getting college degrees. Right. And they're wasting the best years of their life between 20 and 30 when they should be locking down a husband, getting married, having kids, having a family. I think they should do that even maybe before their education with a with an older dude who's a little older, more established, then have the career in the family after they have the kids. Because then you got your kids. Because the, the thing that's happening nowadays is the women are waiting to be 35 or 40 to have kids. Their body's not really there anymore. They can't find the right man for them. They're not as pretty. They're not as sexy. They're not as fresh. They're jaded. And getting trying to find a dude and get married at 35 when you got your degrees, which no men care about. Zero men care about your career, your degrees. Zero. I'll say it again. No <laughs> men care about a woman's accomplishments. They, they, want, they want your body, your companionship, your femininity, your warmth. They want all those things. They don't care about what car she drives. They don't care about her house. They don't care about what CEO she is or anything because men want women for families. Right. So uh, they can get everything else from another man. So, right? no. Right. But so my thing is, OK, like for because you said in their 20s to 30s is the best time and they should be looking for husbands during that time instead of, you know, yeah, school. All that's, that stuff. That, so that was the best 10 years. So I think that's going to depend on people like me, for example, if I I had that, but I wasn't there mentally. You didn't have the right guy. No, no, you didn't. I have didn't. A strong enough guy. I didn't. Clearly, he wasn't. Was he? The, so you're saying if there's the right person and you're with the person you're supposed to be with and you're both, you're going to. So a really mask, a man who is in living his masculine purpose. How is old, going, okay. How old was he? He was at that time. Gosh, I don't even know. He was a few years older than me. It's like five years. He wasn't okay, that old. old but old, I did date a guy that you? was 20 years older than me and that shit was fucked. Okay. No, like no, that's too, that's too old. How, how well, old were you? Uh, so I was with the 20 plus guy, that guy. I'm talking about your first marriage. My marriage. Um, he was five years, four four years older than me. How old were you? Gosh, I can't even freaking remember. It's my early twenties. <laughs> were you twenty? Like, you just give no, me a no, number. No, no, no. Uh, were you? probably like twenty, twenty-two, twenty-three. So you were twenty-two, and he was twenty-seven. Yeah. That guy doesn't have his shit together yet. <laughs> Usually, a guy when he's twenty-five is starting to figure out his shit. When he's 30, he's barely got his shit together. When he's 35, he's got his shit together. So, like, that guy was too young for you, didn't have his shit together, couldn't be the leader, couldn't be the man. So what and then you're, you're probably not happy about that. So, wait, so what you're saying is then, this is my question. So, with that, if a man is in his purpose fully and he's mature enough, is that going to help bring out that feminine in the woman? Because like it'll I help, said, it'll I was... help her relax. It'll help her relax. So if a man's got his purpose and his work handled and he's got the money and he's got the car and he's got the house and he can get the groceries and he gets the food and you don't have to worry about his thing, baby. You just put <laughs> your hair down, have a bath. I got the money. It's all good. You can relax and be feminine. You can put on a dress instead of pants. OK, you can so I makeup. can. So you, know, you can be a woman now. So what I. So I feel like so like I explained when me and Whitney connected, you know, I had and I think that personal development for me was was I mean, I, it had to happen um, because I wasn't going to I wasn't going to be good for anybody. I needed to clear some shit. Right. And we all have shit. Mm -hmm. But um, that's how that's how I felt with Whitney. Like I said. I was older. He's old. He's seven years older than me. But um, right. But, but oh, give me been, the number. How old is he? What's he's 39. 
A guy who's 39 has got his shit together compared to you a would hope so. <laughs> you would well, hope no, a so. A 39 year old for sure. And that and that's a big difference. So like the Spartan Warriors, this book, Hard Times on the front has a Spartan warrior. These warriors would marry a 30 year old guy to a 20 year old girl. That's that was the deal. Because a girl at 20, she was ready to be a woman. And a man at 30 was able to be a man. But he, he wasn't a man until about 30. That's when he could take a wife. Yeah, I mean, I, I think nowadays, though, it's just so it's so different. And I know you talk a lot about, you I don't, know, I don't think like, it's that different. Well, girl. I mean, there's I a lot of boys. They're boys and they're they're 40 years old and they're still boys. You know, yeah, well, th that that does happen. There's like if a guy is 40, and he's not married. He's probably he's probably a complete disaster. Well, so there's a there's about a 10 year window there for men between 30 and 40. You got to snap them up. I just feel like it's just. You know, and I'm just glad that I don't have to worry about this, but I've never been the dating type because I can't like I smell bullshit from fucking 20 miles away. And I can tell if like, I'm sorry, you need to have your shit together. You need to like I, I can't deal with boys. And there's just so like and yes, like you mentioned women now having babies when they're older, which I think is completely fine. I just feel like everything's just kind of going in that direction and people are just. Well, it's, it's, it's getting later and older because it's harder to make money now than ever before. So like in the 60s, you could have a man go get a job at a factory. Minimum wage back then in today's money indexed to gold was 103,000. So you had 100 grand of purchasing power if you're making minimum wage back in the 60s. So a man could go just be a dumbass, go work in a factory, make money. Woman could stay home. They could have babies. She didn't have to go to college because she didn't need to. It was all easy. Fast forward to the you know 2019, two man, a man and a woman working now, they can't cover their bills. Even if they have a university education, they can't cover their bills. They got debt now. Things are more expensive. They can't afford children. This whole thing pushes the child the childbearing years further and further out. So it really is about the money and the money system. That's a really big thing that's stopping people from having kids now. Is you know, there's there's articles about it now. Women can't find men strong enough to marry, and it, it, there's really a three percent of men. This is what I talk about my my book coming out, the Oracle, which is hard times for women. Women are competing for the top three percent of men, so ninety seven percent of the men don't qualify. You just said it. I don't like dating because there's bullshit. Well, ninety seven percent of the men don't qualify. Fifty percent you won't even look at. Fifty percent of men, you're like fuck these guys. They're total losers. You would never say yes in a million years. Forty seven percent of them barely make enough to survive and they barely work enough to survive and they're and like then, fine with it which yeah and they're my fine with it. they're low aspirational <laughs> people then the top three percent of men you know i happen to be top tenth of a percent the top three percent all the women are competing for this top three percent and this is where it gets fucked up when the women go out to the bars and they're whoring and they're drinking and they're dressed up like sluts and they're out there attracting all these 97 percent of loser men they should really be putting on dresses, going to church, being good women, and trying to get the top 3% of men. Wait, but just because, because you wear a revealing dress doesn't mean you're not a good woman. Uh, well, it sort of does. <laughs> it's, no, it's sort of, no, let no, me no. Let me back that up. What you're wearing <laughs> right now is very nice. Thank you. That's I appreciate nice it. Dress. But I do have, you know, like really short you, you, dresses and stuff. And let right. some motherfucker say some shit to me because I will punch him in the fucking face. I don't play. Right, right. That but, doesn't but mean here's I'm what I'm saying. <laughs> Here's what I'm saying. You dress for the job you want, not the job you have, right? If you I, put I on the fishnet that. stockings and the tube top and the little panty shorts that are like pretty much not even covering. <laughs> no, no, your no. Ass. Okay, now that that's different than a short that's dress. That's what girls like, wear I, at the club. They wear that. Is, they wear that to fucking work these I days. I get that. You're not gonna find a husband that way, and if you are, it's not gonna right. be a man. like. Right. And I'm saying go I get understand. a seven dollar sundress at Walmart. A nice sundress. Put on some decent shoes and go to church. And those three percent <laughs> of men. Are probably at the church. They're probably at quality man uh, for sure. Well, we're talking about the three percent, yes, like yes, the yes, good, yes, ones. The good and, ones. And this is the issue for women. They get to be thirty-five or thirty-two or thirty-three, and they go, "Oh my god, I want a baby. I've been whoring for ten years. <laughs> I've had like fifteen boyfriends. Wait. These guys are losers." And then they go, "I want to play in the big leagues with the with the top three percent of men, but the three percent men don't want those women." So now it's now the tables flip, and that's the reality. The reality is women you got to be good women from day one and stay good and be good so you get that three percent because otherwise your landing pad at the end you're gonna end up with one of those losers you're gonna be married to a loser 
or you're going to end up being a lesbian, or you're going to end up being a crazy cat lady one day. So get with those 3% of men, but you have to be a good woman and show him what he wants. The problem is women are all like, oh, no, no, he has to do what I want. And it's like, no, that's wrong. The 3% of men, they're the ones choosing who gets to be queen. So it's really, it's a reversal but I, there. But, you a, gotta but a woman chooses a man. Well, you choose each other. So this 3% you know, of man. No, it goes like this. It, it goes like this. The man will attract a woman and then she must choose him. So that 3% of, of men that you talk about, what makes them good men? I, I'm talking about right now. Yeah. Pure, pure production. So these are the men who can produce. Okay. These are the men who can afford for you to be a woman and a wife. And if you want to have a career, whatever, sure. But these are the men that can act. These are the strong men. 3% are strong men. These are the men that can actually support your feminine lifestyle. 97% of them can't. 50% of them deadbeat losers. 47% barely surviving. So and then what, this but what else? So aside leader. from that, are these faithful men? Are these guys that do whatever they want? What, what kind of family men? Oh, we're not even talking about that yet. I'm just talking <laughs> about 3% can produce. Produce. Okay? The ethics and the goodness of that man. That's why I said go to church. Those guys at church at least are trying to be good or they are good. Right. They're at least attempting to be good on the ethics side. But I talk about it in my book. You're talking women, about just solely purpose. Like I'm just talking generally living on purpose, generally surviving and good. Okay. Like these guys are are barely they're, these are the guys that are producing. So, so, the like, per, so OK, so the three percent you're, you're specifically talking about men who are living in that purpose and are producing and not necessarily yeah. anything else like ethics wise, like you just said. OK, because well, for me, I mean, like look, you, you look, mentioned you good man, see, I'm like. Is he faithful? Yeah. Is he a family man? Is he about his family? Well, now, now you're now you're cutting that three percent down to point one or point. And I'm 3. about that point one. <laughs> well, of course, and I think, of course. But here's the thing, though. But see, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect that from someone if I'm not going to give the same. You know what I'm saying? I think that a lot of times people want and want all this. I want a good man. I want this. Yet you're living this lifestyle, or you're not. You know, you're 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 not there. You know. So, I don't know. That's that's a typical woman thing though. Women say they want everything. They're like, I want this, I, I want I, that, I want chocolate, I want vanilla, I want fast, no, I want I slow. Want, I, want I don't it. want everything. I want I want specific. I when it comes to a man, yes, because I've I've gone through the bullshit. Oh, I so know you do. It's, when it, I don't want everything, I want everything. No, no, <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> when it comes to a man, I know exactly what I want, and it has to do with what I deserve and and value. Because so, so describe this man to me. Well, thank goodness I found him when he read. <laughs> he is about family. He's about his work. He takes it very seriously. Um, okay, which one does he first? Does he do his work first or his family first? You know the answer to that. He works a lot, but but he's, which one does he? No, which one does he do first? Like in well, what like do you mean what's, first? What's, though I don't understand. Like, like if he ha if he wakes up in the morning, what's he going to? Is he going to go do his work? As his priority, or is he going to hang out with the kids? No, and no, like, no. He's going to work. Go I mean, he's going to go okay. to work. He's so going he's to work. He's on his purpose. But, yeah, he's on his yeah, purpose. Yeah, no, that, right. And I and I'm with that. I understand that. And I think that you're right. That's one of the reasons. That's what attracted me to. Shit, I grew up with a dad that all he did was work. You know, mm -hmm. and you kind of mm -hmm. have, you know, in in your partner, there's your dad and there's parts of your mom. Um. So what I'm saying is, he is about his family. He's not out there going to clubs and. None, no, he's about he's about family and and his work, which to me, that's all. I'm happy. Like, I think we have to have a part two if Stefan is willing to do it. So <laughs> you can pick up Breton. Uh, well, really. You mention his book. Yes. Okay, cool. So. We're, we're just getting started here. I think you I get know, that kid an there, Uber. Like I Send said, there Uber is so him. much that I want to talk to you about. <laughs> he's well, two. Get the, <laughs> there is so, much, so much i mean and even just some of the new videos that you put out i want to like feminism all this shit there's so much but oh, feminism um, is a disaster um Huge i agree disaster. though i agree with you but i'd love to hear your your thoughts unfortunately i can't right now but um so hold on where is the so you have hard times create strong men there's a series of four and they're going to be out um the fourth one is what is it women so Hard Times Create Strong Men is my book that's out right now, and it's been a big hit. Women love it. Men love it. The women love it because it helps them find what a real man is, what a strong man is. 
and then men like it because it helps them solve their problems in right. how to be a man, money, sex, religion, politics. And then it's part of a, a series of four books. There's Hard Times 2, Hard Times 3, and then Hard Times 4 is the, for women. It's the Oracle. Okay. The Oracle, the Queen, the Princess, and the Whore. It's the four types of women and how to be a good woman strong men want. Because I think that's the big question for women right now. Like, yeah, you can be whatever the fuck you want. You can be a CEO. You can be whatever. But at the end of the day, what's going to bring you happiness? Probably right. being a good woman that a strong man wants. And you can be happy and have your babies and go off into the sunset. That's really what I think makes men and women happy is having right. a family. Like, that's that's happiness in life. I think that is the... Yeah, I mean, at least for me, I know that's kind of what's in your head. It's like, all right, eventually I hope to find the right man, the right woman, and have my family, right? Um, right. I agree with you on that. So really quick, because unfortunately we have to go. So hard times create strong men. Truly, I, I, I believe hard times create strong people. But what creates a strong woman? Or is that, can you not tell me, is that in the book? Well, I mean, you can be like, yeah. So the book's called Hard Times Create Strong Men because men create the culture. The culture starts with the men. The men go out to the, the wilderness. They go to the edge. They secure the fences and the perimeters. And they have the guns and they do the killing and they kill the bears and they burn down the woods. They do all the hard men shit. That's all the cultures start with men. And the book is called Hard Times Create Strong Men because the culture lives and dies with the men. When the men become weak, the culture dies. Men establish the culture. Women join the culture after it's established. They're not the trailblazers on the edge doing all the dangerous work. They come in after Although the it's camp. Fun. Huh? Although it's fun. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> sure. Like, they could. I mean, I guess. But in history, it's just the men have done the fighting, the dying, and the killing. That's what they've done. So strong women, yeah, I mean, you can be a strong woman. Um, typically, strong women happen when the men are absent, weak, dead, or incompetent. But so see, if you don't have – hold on. If you don't have a father – or if you don't have strong men in your life or you don't have someone protecting you, you usually have to become a man and be strong yourself. And then it, you're a strong woman. But the problem with being a strong woman is men don't want that. We want good women, not strong women. Well, I'm a strong, good woman. And my father yeah. was completely there. And I'm, and I'm not saying that you're wrong or anything like that. But I'm just saying for me, you know, my father was there. And, and that's right. why, you know, like listening to your perspective and everything i'm like okay like so he taught me this like i said i i viewed this just mm -hmm. growing up but then he taught me kind of the opposite like okay you're gonna learn to do this um kind of like what you're saying has happened in a society where you're we're forcing women to do all all of this stuff yet if their purpose is feminine being you know living in their feminine purpose of family and then you kind of cut that time it's like, well, did he see what was happening in society, like coming up or or what? But no, I mean, my my dad, like he was he was always there. Same thing. Work, family, work, night and day, you know. But when he was with his family, he was with his family. Um, I, I believe you can be both. I believe you can be a good woman and you can be a strong woman. I well, just it's, think it's that you relative. need to know balance, you know. It, it, well, no, you don't want balance. It's relative to something. You are a strong woman, but you have a stronger man. So you get to be a woman. You get to go pick up your kids. You get to enjoy your life and wear a dress. If you were a single mom, you would have to be both now. And that's, yeah. that's a different life. The single mom life, that is not a good life. That is a hard-ass life. It's hard. Uh, that's a two-person job that one person is doing. And, you know, it's, it's like women, they buy, like, a bar of soap that says strong on it, and they rub it on their body and say, look at me, I'm strong now. Or they buy the strong no, hair no, no. shampoo or they buy no, the no. strong what well, this is what i'm saying though <laughs> no, no, it's no, relative I, I to something mm -hmm. it's relative to something right relative to your man like you wouldn't go in a boxing match with your man that's retarded right you wouldn't you wouldn't do <laughs> there's a whole like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a whole bunch of things that he does that you don't do that makes you into a woman you get to wear right, a nice absolutely. green dress you get to go pick up the kids that's that's the dream that's great you you're living it um, the strong, the strong woman, no man wakes up in the morning and says, Oh, give me a strong woman with a bunch of muscles with her own house. Her no. Home. And I think or, that, I think that like, nobody wants that. No. Nobody hero with a boy haircut. Nobody <laughs> wants that in tattoos. No. And I, and that's not, that's not what I'm saying. You, you, I know you understand what I'm saying, but unfortunately I think hopefully we will get to continue this because there is, there's definitely truth in everything that you're saying. I think that, you know, women, 
there's just some, the way things are taken and how women are viewing. And of course, that's due to per, uh, perspective. But um, I wanted, there was so much more, so much more. But I got to go because I got to pick hey, up the baby boy. You got you to live, live your feminine purpose and go yes, pick up your son. Yes, of being a mommy, which I absolutely love. Um, mm -hmm. But I just wanted to say thank you so much um, for being on and, and for talking today. Um, where can people find you? So they can go to Stefan Arnio at Stefan Arnio, S-T-E-F-A-N-A-A-R-N-I-O on Instagram. I think I'm on YouTube as that. And then Hard Times Create Strong Men, that book, then get it at hardtimesstrongmen.com. That's hardtimesstrongmen.com. And it's a book written for men. It says explicitly not for women. But <laughs> guess what? When you tell women they can't have something, they're they gonna buy read it, it. They read it. Anyways. <laughs> they're going to read it anyways. And, uh, you know, I've had a lot of uh, happy male and female customers with this book. So it's designed for men, but it's like, it's like what is that? Strong enough for a man, but made for a woman, right? That's what they <laughs> sell deodorant like that. Well... Thank you again. Um, guys, make sure to check him out. He posts awesome content on uh, Instagrams where I first learned of you. So check him out on all of those platforms. And thank you for listening. Thank you, Stefan. And guys, until the next episode, love and light.